Okay, with all the preparation I tried. I don't know if anybody's watching. You want to see if I'm live over there? Yeah, I'm, I'm on your channel. Can you see me? Not yet. It still, says, it still says it's waiting. Oh, I see people popping up. Yeah, there, there's people talking. I, I went in the uh, chat to just let them know we're going, what's going on. Told them we're getting set up. We're going to start broadcasting around here, maybe a little earlier. I'm trying to write down questions. The only good question so far. Jocko! I see Jocko! Jay Jocko! The only good question so far is somebody, somebody's asking if you have any quarantine projects. Oh, yeah. So you, 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 you're going to be my question and answer, man. Thank God this fucking worked out. Hey, Jocko! So, guys, I had a little trouble on the computer for the first time ever in the history of Google. I didn't get my verification code and it still hasn't come through. So, I'm on the, the telephone. Aaron's here with me, fielding the questions. I wanted to go a little bit early just to make sure that this worked. I'm not seeing your picture. I got people looking at me. Can anybody see me? Can I see some people looking? Hey, Jocko! Well, it's just live now. Jaco, can you got see it, me? Got it, got it, got it. You see it me? me? It was me. Okay. Ooh, there I am. Yeah, there's a delay too. Okay. Hey, Jaco. What time is it? Uh, what time is it? We'll go live in just a minute. As everybody knows, where's my phone? Oh, I can't even look at my phone. I'm live streaming on my phone. I can't look at my phone. I had a problem with the damn computer. Aaron's here fielding questions. I want to get the phone up a little higher above my f chin. Yeah, everybody's saying they hear me. That's great. I can't believe this driving me nuts. Still hasn't come in. So I try to go live. I'm going to be live on the uh, chat in just a second. All right, what music is usually playing in the shop? Country music or Howard Stern? Happy birthday. Thank you, everybody. It's my birthday today. Greetings from no way he's going to be able to see this comment. I can see that comment. This is sausage. Is that what it says? Thaya sausage. I see you. Screws and tools. Hello, everybody. Mr. Dressa, do you have any products or reference material I can recommend for people who are starting to work with leather? Um, go to the Weaver Leather site because I'm working with Weaver. They have great tools and uh, look for a starter kit. You really, all you need is a punch, a thread, and an idea. A punch, a needle, and an idea. A punch, a needle, thread, and idea. What do you think? That sounds good. That's it. I don't see anybody, any questions anymore. There they are. They came back. Happy birthday. Thank you, everybody. It is my birthday today. We got about 800 people watching. 76 thumbs up. Leather. Happy birthday, happy birthday. I assume you'd be rocking Public Enemy, Big Daddy Kane. I do. I do listen to a lot of hip-hop. Actually, I do listen to a lot of hip-hop. I listen to anything from hip-hop to country music. Occasionally, I listen to classical music, a little bit of violins and strings and stuff. It's kind of nice. I love a lot of jazz. I listen to uh, a, lot of, a lot of jazz. Lately, I got into Art Blakey and the, uh, I think it's Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. I really got into that. I found that on YouTube. I've been hearing it for years, but lately, YouTube listens to you, listens to you talk in your sleep, and then they suggest stuff. I, I truly believe that they're listening to my brain. Yeah. You're thinking bandsaw tires for your bandsaw. I love seeing how emotionally got at the end of making a finale. I'm such a pushover. It was so sweet, the, 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 all the contestants. Like, everyone keeps asking me what's the the uh, the best thing about doing the show and it's really just making friends with the people and the contestants and and the people behind the scenes the friendships are just great so many I, i'm friends with all the people from season one and season two sorry i gotta pick a booger i think i'm clean i hate that you're right up my nose but k 
Kevin Cook. Curious, why do you have yeah, prescription sure. sunglasses? I've seen you stack up your glasses. I'm constantly going between my glasses. So I go inside, I put on my clear ones. I go outside, I put on my my uh, my shades. So it's just easier to stack them than to just have a dedicated pair. I'm going to constantly be switching them. So it's just easier to keep one pair on all the time. Happy birthday, thank you. What is your age? I'm 53 today. Working on my first YouTube right now in the beginning of Inspiration for Years and Years. Thank you so much. It's, uh, you know, when you think about it, like guys like me and Bob and, you know, even guys like Colin Furs and uh, King of Random, they all had one YouTube channel. They all had one video on their YouTube channel at one point. So everybody starts at the very beginning. So, so somebody's asking, uh, a maker, as a maker that struggles with perfectionism, it makes it really rough when I feel like I've failed on a project, particularly new things. Any words of wisdom? Uh, just keep going. You know, I always like to say, um, like a violinist, when you guys, oh, look at my Jocko Bandit. Hey, Jocko. When uh, anybody that, what was the question? Uh, <laughs> Failures, how do you keep going? Oh, you got to just keep going. You can't, you know, like I was going to say, if you see a violinist and, uh, you know, they play so well and everyone, no, nobody ever, like, thinks that that person struggled. They just assume that, oh, man, they were good from the beginning. You have to struggle. There's, the struggle is just part of the equation. And once you get over that and you start navigating your way into success, that's how it is. That's just how it is. Struggle is part of everything. You know, that's why you got to do tests. A, a lot of time, new people make the big mistake of they jump right in. Did I see Berkey's? Berkey! Love you, Berkey. What I, see, uh, what I see a lot is new people jump right in and they think, okay, he did it, I can do it. You need practice no matter what it is. If it's walking uh, a tightrope or, you know, rock climbing, you're not going to just do it straight away. So especially with, 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 with hand making stuff, you have to practice. You got to, you got to practice. Von Driscoll's saying hi. Oh, Von Driscoll. George, what's up, my friend? Happy birthday from Knox County, Indiana. Thank you, Mr. King. M. King. Somebody's asking about your educational background. My educational background, I went to high school. So while I was in high school, I went to three years. So uh, nine, oh, 10, 11th, and 12th grade, I went half the day to an architecture school. And I would learn all about architecture and engineering. And then when I got to college age and it was time to decide where to go to college, I decided at the last minute to go to art school instead, which was to me was, was really good. I was very happy making that decision. In fact, I took one year off. I left high school and I didn't know what to do. So I didn't go to high school. I didn't go to college right away. And uh, it took me some time, but then I ended up going to the School of Visual Arts. I learned graphic design and 3D model making and prop making and product design. And most importantly, I learned a lot about the toy business right there and then. And that was really, really, really fun. Uh, a lot of people are asking about uh, visiting the farm or visiting the shop after the virus is over. Oh, yeah. Well, I, classes. Taylor and I, um, we, we, we held up on the classes only because we were trying to figure out what to do because this time I mean, we, need, we need a bigger staff. I mean, Brett and Jesse are amazing to help when we did the classes last year, but I can't expect them to come. I mean, it's a big, it's a big, uh, it's a big investment in time and energy. And Taylor and I um, just decided to kind of wait on the classes. Then I started talking with the, the family over at the Blackthorn and we were going to host bigger classes there. And that was a possibility going into the summer. Um, hopefully this thing blows over and everybody's not afraid to be near each other and we can get back to action. At the end of the summer, I want to do a knife class with Steve Pellegrino. I want to do a blacksmith class with Cliff and John over at Sunset Forge and Cliff Dufton. And... Uh, Definitely looking forward to the fall time maker camp. The maker camp last year was amazing. It was all, a lot of activities. This year, the theme of the event this year is uh, sharing skills. So if this thing blows over and October event takes place, let's do it. And then July 4th, as the, at the moment, July 4th, hopefully we get July 4th back, we're going to do the racetrack thing. There's no big investment except for people just showing up, so... If we can do the July 4th racetrack event, that's what we're going to do. Um, Paul Perez. Is what he's yeah. Uh, also, there's a good question about... Um, Thank you, Paul. Good starter, to see you, starter tools for people in basements and things like that, either for kids or for people that are just getting started. Starter tools, you know, any hand tools. I mean, you could, you could basically build fine furniture with a set of chisels, uh, you know, a pull saw, and, 
and a couple of hand planes. It all depends on what you want to make. I think the most important thing, and Bob says it all the time, Bob, Bob and Dave say it all the time, just pick a project and then just try and decide what tools you need for that project. And, you know, obviously if, you, you, if it involves milling machines and all that other stuff, you, you, you make it work. Can you make a motorized drift bike? Yeah, I, I got to get my <laughs> I got to get my go karts. Uh, I got to get my go karts going. Um, yeah, this butter kind of guy keeps saying the same thing. What does he say? He just keeps saying the motorized drift bike because that's what Kurt Furs just did. Oh, yeah, Furs just did a motorized drift bike. I, I love Colin Furs. He's amazing. And I was so I was like a little fanboy last year when I met Colin. We were talking, talking, talking. He goes, you know, like what you do, and I'm like, you know who I am? He's like, of course I do. I was so I was so honored. I didn't think he had any idea who I was. Rob, Colin, said, Rob from Rojas says, "Fucking motorized drift uh, ice pick." Motorized um, drift ice pick. Yeah, yeah. I edit with iMovie. I keep it super simple. I actually have because I was gonna go live on my computer, and then at the last minute I panicked and I had to use my phone. So I edit on an iBook. This is my Mac. This is my new one. My old one's covered with stickers, so some of you guys might recognize that. This is a new book. How many chickens? We just got, we have 25 adults and we got about 40 new babies. And I bought a bunch because I'm going to give about 20 to Mike the fireman. Mike is the, the new shop hangout. You guys might know Left Lane Designs on Instagram. That's Mike. Hey, Troy, if you're listening, uh, I had technical difficulties at the very last second before I went live. And I had to jump onto my iPhone. So I'm on my iPhone right now. Could you please email me that thing again? because I can't seem to find it. It might have went into the spam folder. So email me that thing. You texted it to me, but now I'm on the phone. I can't cut out of this to go to the text message. So um, Somebody's asking, any advice for sticking with and finishing an idea when ADHD makes it hard? Um, you know, you could... I have a lot of that type of stuff. I haven't been diagnosed in a while, but when I was in high school, a lot of people said I had all these learning disabilities. For me... Just take baby steps every day. I got 10 projects. Aaron can attest to this. There's like 10 projects going on at any given time. And if I just do a little bit on each one, I feel like I've accomplished a lot. So if you got six or seven or eight projects or, or even two, just work on one for a few hours in a day. Take a walk. Come back. Work on the other one for an hour. Put one aside for a day or a week or a month and come back to it later. So if you just make a little bit of progress on, on every attempt, I think that's important. It, it, it makes you at least feel fulfilled in the moment. And then all those little baby steps add up to a finished project. There's no doubt about it. Uh, what's your next biggest skill that you want to pick up? Uh, my next biggest skill, I guess, I, I, you know, CNC machining and metal is obviously, you know, what John Saunders does and the guys over there at Saunders Machine Works. That is a, a really, 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 really thing, uh, important thing I want to do. I hope my phone is charging and that it doesn't die because I can't tell. Does this have... Okay, I got a good battery on that. Um, <clears throat> somebody asked me about, uh, is there a better tool than the Delta 14? I don't think so. I really don't. I like the Delta 14 the best of all the band saws because any year you buy, they work perfectly um, with very little tune-up. All the band saws you buy now, I, I, I mean, I'm not, a, a, I'm, I'm not being paid by Laguna, but even the Laguna band saws, I know there's going to be guys out there that are flipping their lid right now, and I say Laguna band saws still aren't better than the 14 or my American woodworking band saw. Everybody stopped casting, and now you don't cast metal, you don't get good products, and that's, that's my fits-all opinion. Non-cast metal products just don't feel the same as cast metal products. There, yeah, I said it. I'll never get an endorsement from Laguna. People are asking about, do you want to debuild anything to help with the coronavirus? Or uh, people keep asking me to get involved. I mean, I have one 3D printer here and one at Taylor's place. I, I honestly don't know if I could make a huge difference. I guess if I can keep people's moral support up and above, uh, you know, the tide, I feel like I'm helping. A lot of people, I've gotten so many beautiful messages that say, you know, in, the, in this troubled times, you know, your videos are a beacon of hope. And that means a lot to me. So if I can just keep maybe trying to whack out two videos a week instead of just one, do more quicker videos, like kind of like I'm, I call them like my make, make magazine videos, the quicker and fun ones, um, stuff like that. Willie's great. Willie's down in the apartment. I told him he's not allowed to come up here to quarantine because he's already quarantining in the city. Willie's good. He's at my New York City apartment. And people are asking about, do you miss the old shop? What spurred yeah. the move? <laughs> I don't miss the old shop at all. I know a lot of people are nostalgic about the old shop. Um, the old shop was in a basement. I had about 25 families living over me. And every single night I could barely sleep because I lay in bed wondering, 
did I turn off this? Did I leave the hot glue gun on? Did I leave the soldering iron on? And I, I really was, I felt responsible for those families and God forbid I should set the building on fire. I would make people homeless or even worse. So I'm so happy to be out of there. Jackman, thank you for that birthday wish. I love you, buddy. Um, so I'm just so happy to be out of that place. And it flooded all the time. The building had bad plumbing. So it was constantly flooding. I'd come in, me and Dave would come in. We'd have a whole bunch of woodwork to do. And there'd be poop and stuff all over the floor. And I, how do I deal with that? What am I supposed to do with that? Biggest um, maker failure. Uh, the biggest maker failure. One day I'm going to have Dave on the me and Dave are going to talk about old school failures because some of the failures I had were with Dave Welder, my, my, my buddy Dave, who I haven't seen in a bit, but we still chat every now and again. He and I made a whole bunch of steel and glass shelving for this guy, and it was just a communication disaster with that client. And we, we tried to, inst we installed it. Everything went well. They, ultimately, I, they were complaining about so many things. I said, don't pay me. I don't care. I just want to be out of this. And when we brought those products to the person's house, yeah, yeah. They didn't fit in the elevator. And the, we had these steel cabinets that were like weighed hundreds of pounds each. And we would have had to carry them up the stairs with glass panels and it was a complete nightmare. <laughs> it wouldn't fit in the elevator. We had to peel off the thing at the elevator door with our leather man that had like the, the, uh, the braille saying that you were in the basement because right. <laughs> we walked through the basement. We peeled that off and that was literally a quarter inch of space and the thing fit through the door to the elevator. Without peeling that off, we would have had to carry it up the stairs. And when we got to the elevator upstairs, we had to peel off the, like, the number five floor thing, <laughs> stick it through and then stick it back on the wall. <laughs> anyway, that was the, that, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Somebody, I, I noticed quickly, somebody asked me about my parents. My parents are still alive. They're both 80. My dad's 80 uh, last December. My mom's gonna be 80 in June. They're both healthy, thank God. My dad was just like me. If you guys saw my most recent video, uh, my most recent vlog, my dad and I together having fun. My dad's crazy. He collects... You want to talk about this old house at all? Ten times more shit than I do. Uh, my dad is good. I see somebody. Hello from Vietnam. Um, this old house has been wonderful to me. I've been on now for about three, uh, maybe five times, six times. I don't know. Um, they've been great. Uh, Kevin is just awesome. It's really nice to see Kevin embrace the maker community and also just the internet. I suddenly noticed Kevin one day just popped up on Instagram and that's how we got reacquainted. I knew Kevin 10 years ago and with the, with the uh, advancement in social media, we became friends again and that's how I ended up getting back on the show. Well, back on the show to begin with. I mean, back in touch with Kevin, but on the show. And I don't know, it's, they always call me like two weeks ahead. They're like, hey, we have a, we're gonna be in your area. We'll come do a segment with you. So it's always very quick decision. It's, um, how old am I today? Jackman's asking me. I'm 53 years old today. What is your current EDC? Let's see. And then I got this. Sorry, Jacko. This is the one that was in my car. I got this. This is a Benchmade. I like this because it's like a Bowie knife that folds. I got this little flashlight. I got my machinist ruler. It's got tents on the bottom and imperial on the top. I got my ice pick, specialized ice pick with the level in the bottom and the magnet. Right now the, uh, where is it? The phone is, is sitting on a steel brick. So there's a magnet. And then I got a couple of other things. What else? Oh, my leather man. Then there's other people asking Sharpie. about... Sharpie. Yeah, a lot of people always are, seem to be asking about tool recommendations, of course. Or maybe you could talk about the difference between buying a brand new tool and buying a vintage tool, like for a lathe or something like that. Like the difference between like a South Bay and a Chinese mini lathe or something. Well, the good thing about buying um, vintage tools is that, uh, that, for me personally, they have a certain soul in them. It feels like you're resurrecting something that like kind of used to shine but doesn't shine. Some of my favorite YouTube videos are when you watch old machine industrials, like industrial educational videos, and you see a guy working on a, like a brand new South Bend lathe, but it's brand new from like 1940. Right. And the, all the knobs are shiny. It's, oh man, if you can get your hands on one of those, that would be amazing. But um, I, I like vintage tools. That's just my thing. I like, you know, when I look at like a brand new, like Grizzly, for instance, when it comes to machine tools, I, I look at that and I go, it just doesn't have like the spirit that like my Kalamazoo bandsaw has. It, it, it's out in the yard. I don't use it as much as I should. It's kind of near the blacksmith shop. But stuff like that and, and the new lathe I just got, Patrick and I got the motor running. 
It's not running perfect. It's not running in all gears. The motor needs more work, but I have it a high speed and a low speed. So I don't have all four speeds, but we have high and low. So that's good. So I will be able to use that until I get it fixed for good. Mm -hmm. um, I just like old machines and they're cheap. Many times, not only are they cheap, they're free. If you find somebody like, you know, you find a widow that has, uh, you know, who's married to some wacko like me that's got 700 machines and I'm dead and she just wants the house back, take it away. You know, you find that more and more often. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are asking about the pants. Like, just to tell them, maybe they're on hold. The pants are, are, of course, are on hold because they were going to be made in New York City. And right now, all jobs in New York, they were going to be handmade at a, at a garment factory in New York City in Manhattan in the Garment Center. And unfortunately, that's on hold right now. And then with this, uh, with current education, uh, with this current climate, I, I don't, I don't want to put them out there and then not sell them. I got to wait till we're all a little bit healthier. And then people are asking about uh, what's, like where, all the stuff that you made for Hammered and Dirty Money and stuff like that, or Hammered specifically. Um, like, stuff is it? everywhere. Um, my buddy Dave Cornwell, I don't know if Dave is watching, but Dave Cornwell's got uh, the poker table. I, the, the way the, po the funny story about the poker table, if you guys saw, I made this poker table where the drawers open up, you turn the top. I made that in 2007. That was 13 years ago. Is that 13 years ago? 2007? Something like that, yeah. Um, so we made uh, that table and one of the guys on set took it and he had it in his apartment for like five years. And then I got a phone call out of nowhere from some strange dude. He sent me a message, maybe through my email and said, hey, I used to live with so-and-so that was the producer on your show. And when he moved out, he left me this table. He goes, now I'm moving out. I, would, I don't want to throw it away. He goes, if you want it, come take it. So after maybe seven or eight years, I came back and took the table back. And then it was in my New York City shop for a while. And then I talked to my buddy Dave Cornwell. And I said, hey, do you want this? He said, I would love it. Actually, I think he asked me. He goes, whatever happened to that poker table? I said, it's sitting right here. It's yours if you come and get it. So Dave got that. It's out in uh, Michigan now. Trash to treasure. Everything's laying around. Like Actually, I mentioned to Aaron, I was afraid I didn't know where this was because I thought maybe somebody took it. But Aaron found this. Where was this? In the back on the, yeah. axe, on the axe wall? This is my second most viewed video, this fireman's axe. I got this head from Tracy Chavant. Tracy, who's in the live streams today. Tracy and Katrina, the, the bowl and spoon making extraordinarily talented duo. I met Tracy in 2015. We brought, went back to his house. He showed me his tools and he had this. And he's like, hey, you could take this and I'll trade you something. So I sent him one and I kept that. And that became this video. So... Funny, funny stories. I'm Korean. Please tell me about the Corona-19 situation. I'm in upstate New York. I'm in Greene County. And at the moment, there's probably 10 cases around here. I don't know. Did we look at the count? Uh, it's up to 20. Last I looked, it was two. So there's 20 cases in Greene County. Closest 10 miles away. I heard there's one. Do you have anybody um, that inspired you when you were young? A lot of people inspired me when I was young. I mean, I just always... just constantly looking and searching and trying to find things that excited me. Uh, I guess I, I always think of like Picasso and I saw how playful Picasso was when I started learning about art and Andy Warhol and, and Leonardo da Vinci and stuff like that. As far as modern makers, um, I guess Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, the architect, because I studied a lot about him and, you know, this, some of the playful architects, I can't think of anybody quite off the top of my head. My dad inspired me. Paul says that. Yeah, Paul, my dad was a huge inspiration for me. My dad was just constantly putting tools in front of me. I don't know Andrew, Andrew Bingus. Maybe I do. Is Andrew the guy who does the, uh, the kite, the, uh, the thing? I'm going through the, do you have ever been to Germany? I've been to Germany a bit. I've been to Germany a few times in the nineties. I went twice to Germany. Where do you order leather? I get my leather from Weaver Leather. Are you carrying what knife are you carrying? I just hold this up. This is a Benchmade. I carry this pretty much most of the time. It's got a sturdy handle. It's good for banging on stuff. And then I, I always carry this. I got about 25 of these. At any given point, there's one within reach. I'm getting a lot of, lot of similar questions about uh, learning new skills. And people like they are asking for tips and tricks for whatever it is they're learning, whether it's welding or woodworking or anything like that. Maybe talk a little bit about how to learn stuff. Or yeah, maybe. I think the most important thing for learning anything is to experiment. And uh, Aaron, in Aaron's story the other day, Aaron held up. Do you have that little piece, that little piece of metal you showed, like the, the bead roller piece? Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's... So <clears throat> the other day, I made this stool, which is my most recent video, which would uh, be behind this one. Um, 
Oh, here it is. So you got to experiment. This is the very first time I used the bead roller was on this piece of scrap. Prior to me using this, I did this off camera and then on camera. That was it. That's the only time I ever used the bead roller. I said, let me see what my level of confidence is. I did this one, this one, then this one. And I was like, oh, I can make a straight line. All right, let's go to the camera version. So it's really important to experiment. And before I set up the, uh, the torch mate table, I made these finger joints on the bandsaw. So this is just right out of the scrap bin. You need to experiment. I mean, my level of experimentation for this was fairly quick, but there are times when I experiment and it, you know, the experimentation, I come to the conclusion, it's not for me. It's, you know, this technical skill set is beyond me at the moment. Robert E. Burke, what is my favorite food? Pizza. <laughs> what is your favorite food? <laughs> Bobby, Bobby keeps asking what my favorite, Bobby, you know pizza is my favorite food, bro. Like, what's up? Or Indian food, I love Indian food. And I love a couple uh, of like heads up from uh, make build modify. And, uh, oh, hey guys! Jackson's in the chat. And... Uh, my brother John going to be in any of my videos? I hope so. I, I brought him here in October. Hopefully, he comes and spends more time. Uh, he just got reacquainted with an old friend. I don't know if you guys know the comedian John Mulrooney, who's a great, funny comedian from the '90s. And now John Mulrooney is a police officer in the area, but he's also still a comedian. So I. They got reacquainted recently, and uh, I suggested that the two of them do a podcast together, just about old-time comedy stuff, and they're really, really excited about that idea. So I'll probably end up doing that podcast with my brother. So f as far as me and my brother interacting, I'll probably end up being on his podcast. Uh, what is my favorite uh, tool that I currently own? I guess my favorite tool would be my two big giant bandsaws, and I do like my new lathe. I haven't really used it yet, but... Pineapple's the best pizza topping. That person could delete that person from the chat. Who said that? You? Or them? No, I said. Oh, uh, you're you're out of here. You can leave now. <laughs> My favorite pizza topping would be pepperoni, like crispy pepperoni, cooked, like overcooked. Uh, would I make another TV show? I would. I mean, at the moment, I'm scheduled to make eight TV shows. I talk to a casting person every couple of days. Nothing ever comes to fruition. So who knows? If it's something came to light, I would do it. I'm, I'm scheduled to be on making it three, but you know, the world is turned off at the moment. Um, please tell us your best secret and how you make, uh, how do you make to have a beautiful wife? Uh, yeah, you just, right. just don't be a jerk. That's all. <laughs> be free and easygoing. That's all I could say. Greetings from Brazil, stranded in Vietnam, been a subscriber many decades. My question is, have you ever found something in the streets of New York? I think I've have found a lot of shit in New York. Everything I own is from the streets of New York. Pizza is the best food. I agree, Lillian Smith. Uh, Ricardo, where, where do you get your inspiration for your new projects? Just playing around, you know, like a lot of times I say it on the podcast a lot. When you're sitting on an airplane, that is a great time to do a mental dump. Just get a notebook and just start free, free spirit, free, just free thinking. Don't, you know, like they do free diving where everybody dies at the bottom of a free dive. You could free think on an airplane and not die. You just keep coming up with ideas. Just write stupid things down. Look around you. I, this is a stupid joke. Turn a magazine over and flip through the magazine. Did you say take a mental dump? I did, Bobby, Bobby Burke. Um, am I Christian? I am, uh, I, I, am, I am nothing. I am human. That's what I am. I'm a human maker. I am in the church you, of making. There's ice picks in the store, right? There's ice picks in the store at the moment. Yep. Um, let's see. Thank you for being part of the Maker for Jesse project. Absolutely two-bit woodworking. Of course, I'm more than happy to. Jesse was, was great. Unfortunately, I only got a chance to meet her uh, very briefly. But, you know, she was a powerhouse and it was really sweet walking around with her here in Little East Durham. She got recognized by like four guys. In fact, there was like a rumor that Jesse was here for that weekend. Did I tell you this? No. And this guy, Carl, drives up, gets out and he goes, I heard Jesse's here somewhere. Where is she? Oh, shit. And this is a guy that I never met. <laughs> kind of vaguely knew of me because everybody talks about me in this town. And he's like, you're the guy that makes stuff on TV. Where's Jesse? And I'm like, she's right here. And Jesse, he was really really enamored with her and she was super sweet she took a lot of time talked to him showed him they were trading pictures of cars and stuff and hey, uh, news about dave dave welder. dave welder i haven't talked to dave in about a month but dave is uh dave is cool dave's got himself a great lady and they're in a great relationship dave has a house up here about 70 miles from here so in this time i got to reconnect with him while we're both Man, probably have. I don't Somebody's asking about Matt. I don't know if they're asking about John's son or... Uh, oh, John's son, Matt. John and Matt are working together out in California. 
doing this thing. Matt kind of gave up on YouTube. I think uh, he might have got oh, disillusioned with YouTube, actually. I suppose. Okay. Big fan here. I'm considering buying a used bandsaw. What are the important things to, to look at? Check out your guides. Um, make sure the guides are all there. A lot of times you buy a used bandsaw and the, guards, the guides are gone and people don't even know where they were supposed to be, especially under the table. The, gar the guides under a table fall out and go missing and nobody even knows they were even supposed to be there. So look for your guides. Make sure your guides are in good shape. I personally like the Delta 14 because it has hand adjustable guides. Every bandsaw now from now until eternity uses an Allen key. And if I walk up to a bandsaw, if they gave it to me for free, if it had Allen key adjustments, I probably wouldn't take it because it just slows life down. You can't, you can't be like cutting and carving and then like oh God, break out an Allen key. Second that show model, much respect. Five second chat, slow mode. I don't know what that means, but thank you. What is your favorite Bob and Dave video? Um, I'm not sure. I guess I think Bob, one of Bob's most high rated videos is the uh, secret room. And that is just, you know, just such a, a great, great concept. And he, and he does it well. I, I, I like the, some of my favorite stuff from Petruto was when he would do the, uh, the weekly roundup. But I mean, I love everything those guys do. What is looking forward to seeing your Make Essential? Will you be there in August? I hope so. I hope we're all going to be there. What is your favorite project for the past and are you looking forward to doing next? Uh, you know, like, I, one of the most important fun things is to look for that kind of Easter egg that's hiding in your, your brain. And for me recently, it was this finger jointed thing. I was super excited to put this project together and come up with, you know, this little out of the box, interesting thing. Not totally brand new, but in a way, I'm just showing you guys here. We're in my shop and my neighbors keep pulling up. There's Aaron on his computer doing stuff. What are your favorite projects from the past? The same question. Um, you know, I always say this, it sounds like a cop out answer, but my favorite, most favorite project of all time is my YouTube catalog. All the videos I got to make on YouTube. You know, it's, I can't even watch half the TV shows I've been on because I just, I didn't edit them, so they're boring as shit to me. <laughs> if I edit them, I'm happy to watch it. If I don't edit it, I'm like, okay, cool, cool, tell me how it was. Yeah, I've seen the question a couple times, people asking about commissions or do you do commissions and do you do mm -hmm. commissions for famous people, that kind of stuff? I take commissions that are, you know, that pay well and, and videotape well. People ask me all the time, the most, the, the most, asked commission project I get is, can you make a stencil for me? And I say to them, do you have an X-Acto knife? Do you have a hand? Do you have a pencil or a Sharpie and a piece of cardboard? Then you have the ability within your power to make your stencil. People see me laser cutting stencils and they think that's the only way, but they don't realize for the first five years, I used these two tools to make every stencil that I had. Uh, what is the thickness of the plate in the latest chair? It's 18 gauge, which I guess is like, what's 18 gauge, two millimeters? Uh, I looked it up last night, I can't remember. I answered the question in uh, yeah. the other chat. Um, what else, what else, what else? Both my parents are retired, by the way. I forgot to say that. My dad's retired. He piddles around with all of his junk in his house. Best maker's event to attend for somebody coming from a long way away. Um, the best maker event would probably be either Maker Central because it's where all the, the, the cool people are or the Catskill Mountain Maker event that we have here. That was such a fun event because it was just like free and easy. The family owns the property that holds the event so there's not too many uptight rules. The rules at the Catskill Mountain Maker event from Austin are there are no rules, but if you break them, we'll tell you. I think that's the best answer I've heard in a really long time. How what do you about seem to know everything? <laughs> what does it say? It said, how do you seem to know everything? I just, I'm just curious. I mean, the most, like, I'll play with something off camera. Like, like it's funny, me and Bob had this conversation recently in a podcast where if I have to do five things repetitively, I got to do the same thing five times. I will do it four times, and then the fifth one I will film, and it looks like I'm a pro. Bob will say, he goes, oh, I always do the first one on camera and the next four off camera. Mm -hmm. So I get my bearings about me, and then I do it on camera. Or I'll film, the, I'll film all of them and I'll only put up the ones that look good. And that's how I look good. It's all, it's all camera tricks. Thanks for, being, thanks for being so nice to my brother during Maker Show in San Jose. He's going through a lot and he said, oh, I lost that. Well, thank you. I, uh, thank you. Yes, Willie is alive. <laughs> Willie is alive. Willie, I keep trying to push Willie on Instagram so that we could follow him on Instagram. And he keeps bouncing himself off. But Willie's good. I just talked to him the other day. 
He's healthy. Willie had one of my black cats down in the city and we just got her back. Are there any makers inspired to solve this ventilator sauce? So, ventilator is like asking us to make one of these. I mean, that's what it seems like. I, I'm not sure how to make an, a ventilator that is an easy ventilator. I mean, M MIT just released a thing, an open source thing where it's a machine that'll actually squeeze one of the airbags right. that they use for EMTs. That's the closest I've seen. All right. I know AVE did some kind of ventilator thing, but I mean, do I want to make a ventilator that's going to be, you know, holding somebody's life in the, you know, in the palm of my technically uh, in advanced hands? I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. Tips videos are coming, guys. Tips videos. I think the next tip video I'm going to do is about CNC, so it'll only get watched by 10 people. Split. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you for my happy birthday wishes. Laser cut metal with an X-Acto knife. There you go. That's the way it works. Holy hell, greetings from Chile. I'm study industrial design and my colleagues were always amazed more. damn the thing yeah, that you're getting a lot of international greetings argentina africa <laughs> somebody's asking how many podcasts do you have i have two podcasts me bob and dave do making it and then me andrew and eric do the fits all podcast we have another episode in the can i just have to edit it this week rain is universe the comments are coming so fast hi hi yeah, Raina. brazil um uh zh fabrications he's is he done with YouTube? No, ZH Fabrications is not done with YouTube. Zach, are you done with YouTube? He just <laughs> said no. He just told me. Fire brick pizza oven. That's a good idea. Actually, that's a really good idea. You saw the pizza oven I made last year with the guys at First Build. That was a good one. By the way, this is David Welder made this right there. David Welder made that anvil. People come in and they go, what is that anvil doing on the shelf? It's made out of styrofoam. Have you ever done a project with Roy Underhill? I met Roy Underhill, but, you know, I was like... Uh, just another, I was just another face in the crowd. He has no idea who I am. I don't think Roy Underhill has an email or a computer. Roy Underhill has a, uh, he has a computer from 1880s with wooden handles. <laughs> what is my favorite m maker YouTube? I guess I'm going to have to say this. I hope everyone doesn't take offenses. My favorite YouTube channel is this old Tony. I have to say it. This old Tony and Colin Furs are my two, probably my two favorite YouTube channels. Um... I miss Spike. I miss Spike too, and it's so funny. I don't know how it happened. I guess it was divine intervention. We lost Spike in February of 2019. And in May of 2019, my friend gave, my friend's cat gave birth to the three black and white cats that I have now. He was having some problems. He kept getting stuck in the city. So eventually I just brought his three cats to my house and those are my cats now. It's Junior, George, and May. Those are the three cats I have now, the black ones. You see them on Instagram a lot. How do, oh, yeah, so Jeff says uh, he likes to see how people hold stuff on the table. That's what the tips video is going to be about, how all the different techniques of holding stuff down on the table. I have to actually, this is sponsored by Arbitec, by the way. I haven't said it yet because I got so nervous jumping into this. We're at 38 minutes. I'm going to go for about another 30 minutes. But thank you to Arbitec for hosting this event. And go to Arbitec's website. That would be arbitectools.com for deals and discounts through this event. So thank you, Arbitec. And Troy and the guys over there. You guys are great. Uh, love watching you over and over again. Thank you. Shop Tour Tools video is coming. I'm going to do the next Shop Tour Tools will be just on the bandsaws and then maybe one on lathes. So the bandsaw and lathe. Do I still watch Wrangler Star? I watch, I watch Cody a little bit here and there. It pops up every now and again. I learned a lot from Wrangler Star. He and I have kind of dueled in the comments back in the day, but, you know, I'm over that now. But he does have, he does have good information. And I've learned a lot from watching Wrangler Star. Have you considered self-producing a TV show style series for YouTube, perhaps another video streaming service? Every once in a while, YouTube Originals asks me to come up with ideas. I come up with ideas and they're like, yeah, but it has to be, has to be, it has to be, you know. So that's the conversation every time. I can say, oh, let's do a show. Uh, but, but, and they're like, yeah, it has to be. And then I said to my agent, I'm like, if Logan Paul pitched them a show of changing his socks every day, they would be like, oh, that's great. What a great, what a great idea. Logan Paul changing his socks every day, that's a fantastic idea. How could you come up with such original content? So, after this opinion, I'll never ever get a live show on YouTube. Taylor videos. Taylor video, actually Taylor, Taylor comes and goes, her opinion on YouTube comes and goes, and she's actually thinking about one right now. Have you, do you, did you fire Dave for all his troll 
back talk yet. No, that was so funny when me and Dave did that troll voice. That now the new troll voice is the baby voice. So now when somebody says something snarky, I'll just put an emoji of a baby in a bottle just to shut them up. So that's funny. What is my favorite material to tinker with? Brass is really nice. Machining brass is fun and aluminum. Um, I have to actually start doing woodwork again. In fact, this, this uh, month I'm going to do a... The guys at Weaver asked me to do just a regular project that I would do and incorporate leather into it. So I'm going to make a set of stools for my kitchen on the new lathe, the new old lathe, and I'm going to have a leather insert on them. So that's going to be a woodworking project. People ask you about the knuckle duster. Do you farm on your property? I This year we're going to. We're going to try to. What is the scary moment of your whole career? I guess when I cut my pinky off. That sucked. Um, did I just see RR buildings in here? Not sure, probably. Um, it's going, I'm, and I'm even, I popped mine out the full screen. I'm not even, uh, so many. Um, what is the scariest moment of your whole career in life, may I ask? I guess it would be the moment I cut my finger off. I cut my pinky off. You can see the scar right here. It's kind of, it needs a shadow on it to really show. You can see how my pinky was cut right through here. Just as a little band of skin on the inside, I didn't cut through. There's a good shadow on it right there. I lost about a, a centimeter of material in my pinky. And you can see. My pinky is shorter than my other pinky by about a centimeter. Let's see, my, see, my top fingers are lined up and my bottom fingers aren't. So doing that was pretty scary because I thought when it instantly happens, you think, did I just cut every finger on my hand off? That would suck. Yeah. And the pain. Uh, I slipped on the table saw. I was doing something and there was a kickback and my hand fell into the blade. Typical, the way they explain it every single time. My, I broke my watch yesterday moving around. You didn't happen to find my bezel, did you? Yeah, we did a lot of moving around yesterday in the bezel for my watch. At the end of the day, I looked at my watch. I said, oh, that sucks. So I bought one on eBay last night for 100 bucks. There's a good making one, which is, uh, do you have a good, do you have a prototype material? What do you like to prototype or tinker with? Cardboard. I tell it all the time. Just get cardboard from an old box, cut it up with a razor blade, start hot gluing it together. A little bit of cardboard, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of wood. That's the easiest way. Um, what happens... What happens with the with the air knuckle duster? Actually, I'll show you right here. Oh my God, I just stepped on the... Can you make a video on how to make videos? Yeah, we'll do a behind the scenes video at some point. So this is the knuckle duster that this old Tony made. It's right here, right next to me all the time. And then this is the one that Tom Benfeld from Tom's Machine Shop in Indiana made his copy of it. So Tom made a production. Tom made 60 of these for me. And I've slowly given out a couple of them. It's, it's illegal. My friend who was a cop was here the other day. He says, yeah, if you got caught with this, you would definitely get arrested. So it's illegal. I can't really sell them. That's why I've kind of been slowly rolling them out to friends and family who won't rat on me. I hate rats. No rats. Uh, Whole family. All people rats. People are asking about videos, filming gear. Uh, how to make videos, etc. How to make videos is easy. I, I like, I've been shooting a lot of videos on my iPhone. Where is my camera? Is my camera here? Oh, it's right here. This is my camera. <laughs> this is the camera I shoot a lot of videos with. It's a Canon. I think uh, Laura was using the same one for a while. I have this lens or this lens. And oh, I have this lens and this lens. That's it. I use either the long lens or the short lens. Sometimes I'll use a, a, the DJI action camera. This has a flip out screen. This is already like three years old and it's fallen a bunch of times. It's taken quite a bit of abuse. And then I have these, which are really cool. These Luma cubes. This popped up on Instagram, so I went right to the link and bought it. So that advertising does work. You hold it, you turn it on. So these Luma cube panels are great. Actually, do I need one now? Maybe I'll use one now. And then for like little tiny key lighting, I use this as the other Luma cube. This is great too. I don't even know if the battery is good in these. Yeah, there it goes. So this is good for just a little bit of key lighting. How do I look now? And I got these little Manfrotto stands that work well. I'm gonna leave that one there. And this one. Claggett's in the chat. <gasps> Bob has entered the building. How are you, Bob? Anybody have any questions for Bob Claggett? And then blind, blind wood turners asking, what's your favorite read? What book are you reading? What book am I reading? I actually. I downloaded the Fountainhead to my, to my Iron Audible. Iron Rand, really? Well, the Fountainhead. Is, it's not really about Iron Rand as much as it's about oh, like an artist and artist's uh, integrity. 
And, uh, you know, in a world of, like, uh, cheese eaters that, you know, want to please the man and guys that want to be outside the box. So, uh, oh, happy birthday, Flid. I saw that <laughs> make everything. <laughs> Thanks, Chris Sepp. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm listening to, uh, oh, I just listened to um, Talking to Strangers from, uh, 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 what, what's his name? The guy that everybody knows. My kiss says, I'm just having a brain fart. Somebody put in the uh, talk, uh, uh, learning to talk to strangers with um, Malcolm Gladwell. So I love everything Malcolm, Gla Malcolm Gladwell does. Um, anyone told you that you look like Negan from Walking Dead? I hear that all the time. He apparently lives around here somewhere. There's a couple of little like pockets of villages where like the rich and famous live. And he, him and... Um, Paul Rudd live in the same town. I heard that on Howard Stern, like 30 miles from here. Some town, like German town or something. Um, what does it say? Duress the number one many tools and machines. Thank you. I'm not sure what that means. Hello from the Philippines. Hello from Argentina. When I could never find Maker's, for Maker Central for an autograph. Why can't I never find you at Maker Central? I'm always at the end of the giant line. <laughs> I know who you are, Carpenter's daughter. I know you. Some people are asking about like CAD design software and, and what do you use for CNC design software? Uh, Fusion. Use Fusion. It's the best. I mean, like it's, I mean, it might not be the best. I don't know. There's probably better. I know. Uh, I just was working with Cliff. Cliff and I just 3D printed some little anvils, Cliff Dufton, and he uses, um, I think he said he was using R Rhino. But if you start in a program, that's the best program that works for you. So I like Fusion because it's every modeling program. Rat rod build, <laughs> Tony Rouleau. I keep looking for a good car. I'm looking for a good rat rod. And I found on Facebook Marketplace a house near near Hudson and they have endless amounts of cars. Some wacko like me must have died and his daughter seems like she's selling off his collection. So right. I want to go there and try and find. But I keep looking. Me and Mike from Left Lane Designs and, and everybody who's hanging around the shop are going to build that rat rod. How about a video of the rest of the sketchbook? Oh, that's that's cool. I don't think my book is here. I think it's at the apartment. Yeah. No, I mean it's at the house. And then, uh, a bunch of times people have been, asking, have been asking about collaborations with like different famous YouTube makers. Collaborations I mean, are great. They just you know they're just complicated because we all have our own lives to do. Um, you know the the collaboration I did with this old Tony was perfect. It just it's also like at any given time the collaborations going on that just take years to to, to patch up to solve. Uh, what is my oldest antique tool? <laughs> here. Eric says, have you ever thought about doing a collaboration with Hand Tool Rescue? <laughs> oh, of course. I guess my most antique tool, I'm, I hope I'm not going to kill this thing. I'll show you my most antique tool. Somebody asked me, what is my oldest tool? And my oldest tool is a printing press, which I'm going to restore. It's outside because it weighs 4,000 pounds. It's this antique printing press from 1860s. It's a uh, Made, made in Kest in New York in the 1860s, and it's missing a couple of parts. And I asked a couple of uh, collectors, and they said, if the parts are missing, they don't exist, so you have to make them. So I, I, I accepted that challenge. What is my relationship to James Victoria? James Victoria and I both taught at the School of Visual Arts at the same time, and we were sharing students. So I would have students that James had, and James would have students that I had, and we were constantly being told about each other. And then one day at a gallery show, I said, James, I'm Jimmy DeResta. He's like, oh my God, I keep hearing about you. I said, and vice versa. And we just made friends that day. And then we didn't see each other because he moved to Texas and I moved upstate. And then one day he popped up on YouTube. And so I found him on Instagram and we just started talking again. And I just love his message. He's a great dude. <clears throat> Do I know Russian language? No, I don't. I might've learned one or two things over the years, but nothing I remember. Where am I from? I'm from New York area. I was grew up, and the I grew up in the suburbs in New York. Um, are you going to do any more classes? We do. Taylor said last night she misses the fact that we weren't able to schedule classes, um, and then this happens. And so you know, this is going to take some time to, to really fade until uh, everybody feels safe again. Bringing a product to market. I know that's a long topic, but somebody's asking about. Uh, bringing a product to market. The, the, I, I I could. It's not easy, but if you just start fiddling around making something and selling them on your Instagram, and then slowly, if that grows, you sell it on your Instagram, then you sell it on your Etsy, and then you sell it on 
you know, build up your channel and then you could do a Kickstarter. You know, look, look at what Jocko did. If Jocko brought that product to market. Um, it's, there's no easy way. It's, there's no easy way and there's no, this must be the only way. If you make something cool that people want and you start selling it through your social media, then it's going to work. There's no easy task. The most important thing is to make the first one and exchange money with somebody for it. And then that'll give you the gusto to make the second one and then the third one and then the hundredth one and then the thousandth one and then the 10,000th one. Put that on a poster. What is your suggestion to snowflakes who want to watch and critique people who do <laughs> but are lazy and fat? I just joke with the baby voice. Um, I think that people just have big opinions you know people the being behind the computer they say the, the keyboard warriors they have they have the ability to, to to say their opinion but if they were right in front of you they wouldn't say it george collin said it best the comedian george collin said it best he said how much of an asshole somebody is to you is in direct relation to the proximity of how close they are to you so if somebody is on the computer, they can say whatever they want, but if they were right in front of you, they might go, oh, hi, <laughs> how are you? So, like a guy in a car, you scream at a guy, you go, that guy is an asshole, but if he's in line in front of you, you go, this guy's an asshole. So, that's what it's like. Do you still have your downtown shop? No, I'm out of downtown totally, other than my apartment. Let's see, um, do, you, do you want to travel next? Where do you want to travel next? Well, I want to go visit Jocko and, uh, and probably if I do go to Europe, I'm going to go to Jocko's first. Uh, oh, my God. Jimmy dressed the live. I'm a friend of Hassan. Habu, greeting from blah, blah, blah. Oh, damn, it went away. Oh, there it is. Have you seen my, last year my mobile anvil tree stand with Lucas and Hassan? I wonder if I've seen it. I'm not sure. Send it to me. Instagram it to me. Oh, you know what? That might be a, that might be a bot. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, he's saying some names we know. Yeah. Uh, do you still keep the workshop? Do you, do you, will I keep the workshop I'm in now or move permanently to the new? Actually, this workshop is cheap and I like how scrappy it is. I wouldn't want something this scrappy in my backyard. So I'm going to keep this and keep this as scrappy as I can keep it. And uh, my backyard barn is going to kind of be like my television studio. I'm going to keep it clean and big so that I could do anything in there. Have I ever been to a dead show? No, I used to go to the... Um, I used to go see the, uh, uh, I can't remember what they're called, the, the traveling, the, the engineers. It grew, uh, in Long Island, we used to go see a dead, uh, dead cover band that was like famous. Like they actually stood in for the dead a couple times. That's how good they were. Can't remember what they were called. Um, are you upgrading? I have an iPhone 11 and an iPhone 10. Let's see, hand tool rescue, ah, okay. The bo oh, that's you, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, What's the worst injury while creating? I guess I, I talked about cutting my pinky off. Um, the worst, and Adam talked about it the other day on his live stream, Adam, uh, Adam uh, Savage. When your hand gets stuck in a machine and you're like, ah! and you got to go like this. That is the scariest part. Andrew, my buddy Andrew uh, from Hand Tool Rescue, just got his finger caught in a machine the other day. He got a pretty bad crunch and he got a bad cut. So that's, that's a bummer. How has COVID affected my work? Well, it's just affected the economy on a whole. You know, a couple of advertisers are on hold for the moment just because spending is down for everybody. So that's really how it's affected my work. But um, as far as me actually physically being able to do stuff, I have more time now. So in that case, it's good. Do you still play guitar? Not really. I mean, I just made that guitar for Stefan, but uh, I don't play. Who's the next after Dave and Brett? We have Aaron here. Aaron's in this comment section. Everybody say hello to Aaron. Aaron, what's your, uh, what's your socials? Uh, Wandering Matia on everything. And Aaron Matia on YouTube. Aaron Matia. Aaron used to work for Adam and, and, uh, and, and uh, Jamie. That's right? Yeah. Mythbusters. Uh, Aaron used to work for Mythbusters. He was on how many years? Four years? Three years. Uh, something like that. It was a mix of uh, full-time and part-time, so it's hard to remember. Yep. Uh, do you do you always despise so much? Why do you always despise so much material? You should make better care of the material. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Why would I despise material? That's what I have. Uh, where do you get wood and do you do a video? I get it everywhere. Uh, first knife I made, I sliced my hand open while sharpening it. I know the feeling. <laughs> well, at least it was sharp. That's You should be happy about that. 
Um, what's your dream old machine that you don't have? Um, what do I need? I'm trying to think, what do I need? Uh, there's a big printing press I want. It's like 24 by 18 or something like that. I'm not sure. I don't know. These things surprise me. I learn about machines when I first see them, and then those are the ones that I need. I have not been to Brazil. Water jet. Oh, I have, uh, we have the Wazer. Jaco! Jaco's talking about water jet. I guess having a big water jet would be fun, but that takes up a lot of space and the compressor and the, you know, the, the, the motor and everything. It, it takes up a big footprint. It likes, I don't know. I'll, I'll, if I need something water jet, I'll ask Jason over at Fireball Tools to do it for me. David Welder, happy birthday. Much love from here to you, Jimmy. That David Welder just texted me. Dave, I love you, buddy. Um, does your work require a lot of time? Can you spare time for your social life? Well, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. Protect your digits. What's up, my friend? Jimmy's reigniting the pilot of creativity. Uh, protect your digits creations. Says, protect your digits creations. Thank you, Jimmy, for reigniting the pilot of creativity. Thank you, Greg. I love you, buddy. Danny Daniels, you should work with Machiko Kakukjiyo. I don't know who that is. Me and my dad met you at the woodworking convention in Boston. Crazy to have seen you there. In Boston, hmm. Not sure I was there. Power Hummer. Ooh. You know what I want? I want a little giant. You and Alex Steele inspired me to make a wooden knife. These bots are impressive. <laughs> yeah, because it's what it is, is there's a bunch of robot... Uh, things in there that are just repeating what other people are saying. And how, like, why, like, what is the point of that? I don't know, engagement. <laughs> oh, sorry about all my nose hairs. We have about nine minutes. Do you use, what do you think about the Panther router? The Panther router is outside of my level of interest. I have CNC's and I probably would never use a Panther router. I love, uh, I love uh, Matthias. I think he's amazing. I'm sure he probably, um, I don't know what his opinion of me is, but I really do like uh, Matthias Matthias Wandel. Yeah, he's he's one of the reasons I'm on YouTube. I I think he's he's been one of the most creative forces behind what we all do. I mean, he's like a sleeping behind the scenes guy that we all watch. I think most of us watch, and uh, but he came up with the pan router, and I looked at to me, it's too complicated. It works great for him. I mean, he's got the mind for it. I don't. How many pounds? I would like like a like a fifty or or hundred pound little giant. Anybody got one? Anybody? I need a little giant and a forklift, preferably free. <laughs> um, thoughts in getting away from the table saw? I'm not sure what you mean. I use a table saw all the time. I don't think you can get away from a table saw. I guess if you had like my big CNC machine, I could lay out and CNC all the panels for like a cabinet or something. But I don't think like that. I, I mean, it's just not. It's not for me to think. Like, what would you buy with your last thousand dollars? Probably thousand dollars worth of pizza. Happiest part of your job. The happiest part of my job uh, is meeting new people and just getting to socialize and hanging out at the events. That's really the most fun. But also the happiest part of my job, I guess, might supersede that would be getting cool free tools from my advertisers. The steel and wood bench is now in my house. The girls that had the hair salon there at the where the bench was above my New York City shop, the girls left that spot and they called me and said, hey, the bench is going to be here without anybody watching it. So we're gone. You can come and take it if you want. So I went over there. Willie, actually, Willie and a friend went and grabbed the bench. And then uh, next time I was in the city, we brought it. He put it in the apartment and now it's here in my backyard in upstate New York. Actually, I'm going to tell you guys, if you hang in the live, if you hang in the live stream, um, thank you again to Arbitech Tools. Go to Arbitech Tools for deals and and uh, and discounts for the Arbitech product line. Uh, Nick St. Amon is on from 1 to 2. So go to the Nick St. Amon YouTube channel. He's going to be doing a live stream right after me. I'm doing this tomorrow, by the way. So if there's any questions that didn't get answered today, we're going to do the same thing tomorrow, 12 to, 12 to 1. What is the project you're most proud of? Who did I see? Um, my YouTube channel. What is the project you're most proud of? Uh, Jimmy, hey, Jimmy, thank you for the excellent videos throughout the years. May I become a fan moment? You made a bell for your dog's house. Huh? I just saw that, pro that, that dog house. I just moved it last night. I'm cleaning up, and it was in the other shop. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I spent 20 days near death in the hospital. I stumbled on your videos, and you keep me sane. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. That's so nice to hear. Those, those like moments like that are really what keeps me going. I first started doing this to show off, and then when people started sending me notes like that, I started realizing that I have a responsibility 
to my fans. And when people say in this time of crisis, you know, are you going to make masks? Like I said, if I focus on making masks, I'm going to take my time away from this. There's so many good people doing it. I don't know that I have the tech or even the contacts right now to put them anywhere. There's not much going on in this area. And you said uh, that Nick guy is going to be on the Arbor Tech channel, the Arbor Tech YouTube channel. He's going to be on the Arbor Tech YouTube channel. That's right. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, because he's going to, I said his channel, he's going to be on the Arbor Tech channel. Thank you. I says uh, you inspired many of us. Thank you very much. Uh, Jimmy, thank you from, oh man, these things keep jumping out of, out of sight. Thank you for my heart. I spent 20 days. Oh, that's the same one by somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the box <laughs> that we're talking about. Two people spent the same time in the same bed. Any Filson events planned? I don't know. It's, go bombard their website and tell them because I made a canoe for them and then I never heard from them again. I actually wrote to them a few times. Hey, guys, you want to do something? Nothing. So if anybody in the New York area wants to see me at Phil's and go bombard their Instagram and say, where the hell is Jimmy DeResta? Um, can you take, how long would it take to make a knife? Sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes three days. It all depends. I love you, brother. Stay safe. Marty Luce, thank you. Would you ever grow a long beard? Probably. I picture like when I have a long white beard, <laughs> suspenders, no shirt, and I have a school bus riding in my field, that's when I arrived. And people keep asking about, I don't know, so All right, so I'm gonna sign off for now because I want you guys to go and check out Nick. Um, thank you, everybody. I think this is gonna repeat on my channel, right? This will stay live? Yeah, it'll, it'll shake rock as a video. All right, so I, I'm gonna do some live logo, live logo. I'm in mirror image. Wow, I wonder if it's going to flip when it goes normal. I'm seeing normal. I'm going to freeze frame this as the thumbnail. Izzy's doing good. I talk to Izzy every now and again. He's doing good. We spoke the other day. All right, I'm signing off, guys. Thank you all very much. I'm not sure how it's going to be. I'm going to just close it. Love you. And live.